So, well, what have we got next? Well, moving the neck aside, because I'm winding up, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, what pickups I'm going to use. Anyway, these Wilkinson pickups, pretty cool. The only thing is, they sort of made cheaply. Well, they've got to be, because that's what they go into. Cheap guitars. Well, by the time you buy them on the discounted price on the street, the discounted guitars that are made cheap in the outset. And what they do is they put a magnet across the bottom and it all feeds up through the coil. And there's your work and some pickup. Funnily enough, it's got a brass plate on it, or it's something brass colored. <laughs> Let's rephrase that. Interesting, because that helps. And this one's just plain old regular. And it's also got this big fat magnet. And if I, if I could take this off, which I'm not going to try, but if I could, you'd probably find it similar to that. Well, there they are. You can tell straight off, in my opinion, that they're not the best in the world. However, I have heard Wilkinson pickups, and uh, I can sort of recommend them. Yeah. So that's good. I'm not going to use them. <laughs> so it's a Chinese packet. Go back in there. It cost me nigh on nothing. I think about. I don't know, they must have been $40 a set. It's real cheap for a pickup. Well, for two, actually. Like I said, I was going to use them. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, I might as well make the best I can. After all, I do want to make the best Telecaster in the world. And uh, it's a subjective thing, but they definitely won't help. So they're out. Get out of here. So then... I discovered some more. Scratch. This is funny. So I decided to buy some Bill Lawrence pickups. Now, it all sounds simple, doesn't it? You go and find Bill Lawrence pickups and you buy them. And when you bought them, the Bill Lawrence pickups, right? No. Not quite. <laughs> Well, let me explain why. Because back in the day, I love saying that, back in the day when Bill Lawrence got together to make pickups, he had a partner. I forget his name now. It doesn't matter. There's basically two of them in this company. And they're making the pickups, and the pickups get more famous, and people start buying them. And then Bill and his mate decide they're not mates anymore. So they split up. What have you got today? Well, today you've got actually two companies that basically make Bill Lawrence pickups. <laughs> you've got Company A and Company B. These are Company A. Well, I looked at Company B and I thought them pickups sound great, look great, probably are great. And I looked at Company A, and I thought, that pick pickups look great, they, they sound great, and they probably are great. And they both built all around pickups, <laughs> if you know where I'm coming from. Some of you will know the answers to this, but most of you won't. So, I bought some. I was going to buy them from Bill Lawrence B. But Bill Lawrence B had this waiting list and things, and uh, they were at three times the price. So I thought, well... <laughs> It's a cold, it's England. Yeah. I thought, well, uh, I know the answer to this. They're both Bill Warren's pickups, I'll buy the cheap ones. <laughs> Cheapskate Tony. Yeah. So, what did I get? I can't tell you Bill, Bill Warren's B, by the way. But these are Bill Warren's A. Black label. I, I thought society. Of course, I'm wrong. But in his advert. Oh, hole in the neck. <laughs> In his advertising, Bill Warren A, he said, let's pull this one out as we go, he said, quite categorically, are these pickups, these are the pickups Roy Buchanan used. And the other one didn't say that. And I thought, well, I'm trying to get to a sort of best. Telecaster in the world, 
And I guess Roy Buchanan's probably was. <laughs> but Danny Gatton would say, no, it wasn't. That's another story. We'll come back to that. So there's one. And it's got none of them horrible ceramics underneath. It's got real magnets and it's all nice. That's the neck pickle. Even the wire looks nicer. That's one of them. Now you've got this other one, which is just as interesting. And I'll, I'll pull this one out. Oops. I pulled it out the other end, but don't worry. I pulled it out. I had a look at this one. I thought, well, that looks uh, meaty. You can see. It is. Oh, this one's got a galvanised steel plate on. Maybe that's what the 1950 had on. I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> I might be old, but I'm not that old. So there it is. Uh, looks nice. Yeah. Bill Lawrence. Black label. So, these look great. And, you know, having that Roy Buchanan thing going on, I thought to myself, well, hey, you know something? If they've got enough for Roy, can't be good for me. Let's put them back. Put them back as we talk. So, I bought them. Sounds a bit like on that thing, on that, uh, that auction thing that you see on the TV in America. You bought it! You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. I watch that too. Let's put that back. So there they are. Black label. From Bill Lawrence A. Oops, wrong way around. Bill Lawrence A. There they are. They look great. And you know, you got that thing about, like I said, Roy Buchanan. So, uh, am I going to put them in? No, I'm not going to put them in. So they're back in the box. <laughs> I'm a picky guy. Maybe I should have bought the expensive ones. Maybe I'd have felt better. I don't know. But the Wilkinsons, you know, they're not that bad. I'll leave you to figure the Bill Lawrence thing out yourselves. If you know the answers, Great, I know the answers too. But anybody who doesn't might want to do a bit of research on the internet. It's actually awesomely funny. How any companies could do that to themselves is amazing. Anyway, I did a bit more research and I thought to myself, no, I really need the best pickups in the world. I need pickups that are not going to sound crap when you crank the amp up. I need pickups that I'm not going to have all that home and buzz. I need pickups that, you know, the pros say, these are the best pickups in the world. That's what I need. Because it's going to be the best Telecaster in the world. Trust me, it will be. So what did I choose? I choose them. Well, what the hell's that, Tony? These are Joe Barden pickups. Joe Barden engineering pickups. I like them engineering word, don't you? Let's get rid of that box. We're not going to use them, are we? Joe Barden. And it says on the front here, Gatton T-style set. White. Because I wanted to get white on this guitar. For some obscure reason. Don't worry, it's going to come out right in the wash. So there they are. Well, what do we get? Got a piece of Joe Barden paperwork, who cares? We get two pickups. Well, then don't look like Telecaster pickups, Tony. Trust me. Just trust me. Some of you do. Ah. Got a sticker too. The other things you get is you get set of mounting screws, very nice. Get a couple of capacitors. And you get this ground thing which was based on, uh, they say, uh, like the old Telecasters. Great, oh, I'll do that too. I'll put all this stuff back. But I looked at the, uh, the piece of paper that came in here. And it said here, you can see it, well maybe you can't, but don't worry, I'm going to tell you. It says here, for this one here, 
over the volume to the tone that the cap is 0.5 microfarads or 0.047 in brackets for the ones that you can buy or the one they supply actually and I thought nah don't want to do that I need a 0.5 got one now this 0.5 isn't any old 0.5 this one is ZYW 155 0.5 microfarads 130 volts and it's uh, paper something or other beeswax and all that stuff and there's a guy in California that makes these and he made three or four for me I fitted some in some strats before but this one is uh, absolutely perfect for putting in this Telecaster so that it's going to sound uh, well, like the greatest Telecaster in the world it's going to be cool so let's put that back move this out of the way and have a look at these pickles oh by the way <laughs> you know some of them lunatics out there uh, suggest that hey Tony he didn't buy them he's uh, he's had them given to him you know the same way we had that uh, that thing given to us no you're wrong I went out and spent the money and paid the tax at 20% here in England and there they are I'm just like you and I'm going to fit them in this strat this sorry strat fancy thing this telecaster and make it the best the greatest telecaster in the world so these are the pickups. I just wanted to cover that, you know, just to keep things clear. So this neck one says it's 7.12 on the Richter scale. And this one is 8.12 on the Richter scale. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. I don't know why, but I <laughs> did. And one thing about these uh, Joe Biden pickups that I like is that, although they're humbucking pickups, sort of, they're really more hum-cancelling pickups because you've heard of that Danny Gatton fella. Well, I can't play like him. I wish I could. I can't play like Roy Buchanan. I can't play like... I can only play like me. I'm not that good at that. I try and copy myself sometimes. <laughs> but what he said, Danny, when he was around, like, make no mistake, Danny Gatton is not a fool. Was not a fool. And by God, could he play? He said that these pickups are the finest pickups in the world. They're the best pickups. End of story. So, no matter how we look at it, when you've got a player like Danny Garton saying that these are the best pickups there is, you can trust me, they probably are. And that's why I chose these. I didn't go for the Roy Buchanan pickups from uh, the other one on the black label. Because I don't believe it. But I do know that these, in particular, were actually made to exactly what Danny Gatton wanted. He, he could play all styles on that Telecaster, so that's great. I've got some other mods as well that are going to be fitted onto this world-famous Telecaster. It will be one day. And uh, it's going to be good. So, not much more I can say about that. For now, we're going to carry on doing the build. I'm going to put these away. And then we're going to carry on where we left off. But I did want to talk about the pickups and why I chose these pickups as opposed to the really cheap pickups, the intermediate pickups. And I ended up with the expensive pickups. By the way, these cost me, I think they're about $270 or something equivalent. 200 and, yeah, somewhere like that, equivalent. So they're not cheap pickups, but it is a set. They did have the colour I wanted. I, what I like as well, I like the uh, finishing. These are awesome. Awesome. You can tell that these are no bottom end pickle. No matter what anybody says, I don't doubt it for a second. By the time we see the wiring and the rest that goes in this, they're going to be the world's best. Think about that. Well, we're back with this again. It's all nice and good as it comes from Warmoth, but unfortunately that's not how it's going to have to end up. We're going to have to do a bit of work, especially on a Telecaster, but Telecaster's been uh, turned into something better in some way. But uh, let's not worry about it for now. What you do need 
as always on my builds. Stop. Why are you telling me what's that about? Well, this is copper tape. Some of you have seen it before, some of you haven't. Whoops, that's pretty where you can see. Let's leave it there. I'll leave it just there. Yeah, some of you have seen it before, some of you haven't. Well, if you haven't seen it before, uh, you really want to go and have a look at my other builds because I think on every build that I've ever videoed, not the ones that I didn't, uh, I've used this stuff. It, it, it's awesome stuff. And what it does, what you've got to do is cover everything up with this, or in these holes, not in the neck. <laughs> in that hole, in that hole, and in this crevice down here, and indeed in some of that hole down there. Oh, yeah, you put this stuff on. This stuff, it's got glue on it that can conduct electricity. So, if you've got two pieces of tape, imagine that, when you stick them over the top of each other, the electricity can go from this side to that side, or across. Anyway, basically, if you fill all that area in, it'll be uh, sort of protected against uh, spurious signals in the air such as RF signals, radio frequency signals, various types. And they don't have to be at any given particular frequency. They just, uh, the way they get into your guitar wiring is uh, all very simple really. If you've got to imagine a piece of wire on your, on your pickle. Well that's a particular length. You're going to cut them and you're going to do things like that. But it'll end up being a particular length. Right, now that, that, that particular length of wire will have a, uh, what's called a resonant frequency. Basically, these radio frequencies are out all around us. You can't see them, but they're there. So they'll hit a piece of wire, and if the wire is the right length for that frequency, it'll put a signal into the wire. It'll vibrate the wire. You can't see because it's vibrating very, very fast. In fact, if it was 450 megahertz signal, say, the antenna was this long, and the wire was this I don't know, something like that. Basically, it would be going up and down 450 million times a second. So you aren't going to be able to see it, but you'll hear it. Because it will come out to the back, out to this, down to your amp, into the front end. And the front end of your amp will amplify that, that noise. Or it could be uh, a derivative. Let's imagine we have that wire that's resonant at 450 now. Well, if you took 450 times 5... 2,250 maybe, yeah. That'll have uh, frequencies all the way down the bandwidth every fifth of the way or a third of the way until it hits where your piece of wire is and so you'll still get noise even though it's at 2.2 gigahertz it'll still come down here at 450 say. So by putting this stuff in what you're doing is you're trying your best to eliminate those radio frequencies from coming into the guitar because once they come in they get out of this wire into your amp and that's why you get noisy strats in particular or telecasters I dare say so I always use this uh, this stuff and I'm going to fill the pockets in now and I'll see you in a minute when I've done that well I'm back that's what yours should look like you can see that these have been filled out with copper all over. And if you notice, there's just a little rim around the edge of all these things. Tiny little rim. And they're there so that whatever you put on them can, be, can seal it all off. And we'll come back to that too. Now the only other thing you've got to do here is take the now infamous masking tape and mask everywhere inside but not around that top edge. And that's just to stop things uh, shorting out as we build the guitar. So I'm going to go and do that now, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So there's the job. As you'd expect to see it, you can see that it's been masked in here, and not around the top edge. Same in here, and not around the top edge. They don't have to be 100% looking perfect, as long as they just stop everything from touching the... Uh, I'm back. Well, it's another night. As you can tell, I've got different clothes on. I'm starting to smell a bit with that. 
shall I got changed? Well, here I am. I started to fit these uh, feral things in the back of the, uh, the body. And some people have a lot of problems with these, and some don't. And I guess I'm one of the ones that don't. Or do I? Well, actually, what the problem is, is when you get a body like this. This one was pre-finished when I got it. And uh, these ferals sort of fit in, but not very well. And I've read on the internet that, you know, you get people with soldering irons to warm them up and melt the glue and all sorts of things going on there. Or a big press on a drill, you can do it that way, which is also a bit of a nightmare. But uh, there's an easier way. Well, that easier way isn't actually that easy, and uh, you could get a lot of mistakes and, you know, get things wrong. Or, you, know, you could buy a reamer type of thing that sort of fits in here and just clears out this clear clears out this clear uh, finish. That's a bit of a mouthful. Well, what the problem is, really is, is, is that the, the, the finish has gone down in these holes and it's dried and it's made the holes slightly smaller and it's made them just tight enough so you can't fit the ferrules in the hole. Now, I'm going to show you something that I did and you're going to cringe, but I'm just one of them ordinary guys just like you. I've got my pair of scissors. I didn't cut my hair because I haven't got any. <laughs> but what I did do is I stood up like this. Yeah, I'm going to look down. And I sort of put this in here and just cleaned around that hole. You can hear it if you listen careful. Hear it? And if you look at what's coming out, you can just see the finish coming out of the hole. And then you can put in the ferrule like so. Just get it start. You can press down on it, get it, get it straight. And then what I do, I don't go and get a big fat hammer. What I actually do is get a piece of card like this. And I use the end of the, uh, the socket. And what I do is put this on here and just gently tap them into place. You don't damage the uh, ferrule because it gets hit by this. You uh, don't overexert pressure because you've got a nice simple thing like that. Well, I'm going to do the other four. You can see I've already done two. Well, I hope you can. I've already done two. So I'm going to do the other four and then we can carry on with something useful rather than this uh, boring thing here. You saw how I did it. Don't get it wrong. Don't over do it, otherwise you'll be uh, holding them in with some uh, araldite, won't you? <laughs> there you go. Well, there you have it. Job done. It took me all of about uh, eight minutes. <laughs> eight minutes for that. And there they are, they're all flush, all knocked down level, all very nice. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit closer so you can just take a quick look. There you go. There's a quick view. You can see that. They're all very nice. Well, they're all very nice from where I am. Might not be from where you are, but there you go. What I'm going to do now, uh, really, is to just fit the neck, just for now, and then we'll move on a bit later uh, to something else. You remember, we did all that stuff. Got the holes already in the neck on this Warmoth one, which is nice, I haven't got a mess about as I did before on the other guitars. Go and check them if you're not sure how to do that and your guitar neck has got no holes because that could be fun. Uh, so let me fit this neck and I'll show you in a minute. Hey take a look at this. I don't know if you can see that. I can't. Oh, that'll look great. <laughs> well hopefully you can see. It says on there Fender Custom Shop and they cost an arm and a leg. <coughs> Must be the whiskey. Go and get yours on eBay. Makes it look better. Doesn't play better, but it looks better. This is a gold one too, and they're really difficult to get hold of. Anyway, I'm going to fit it and I'll show you in a minute what the results are. As you can see, I still haven't fitted the neck. Well, there's a very good reason why. See, when you buy something like that, that Fender Custom Shop neck plate, you know it's right. 
there's no maybes. And I put it to you that this Warmoth neck is drilled right for fender bolts because it's a fender license neck. And funny enough, the body is a fender license body. And I know that the holes are correct for fender screws. But these screws here, you can see them. They came with a compatible neck plate. And the problem is this. But first of all, those screws, mine in here. Now I could sit here and uh, drill them out. That's no real deal. I could do that. They sort of semi-fit. It could be the edges of the material, you know, like the, the finish that's stopping them going through, a bit like it was with these ferrules. But I don't think so, because when you fit them to the other side, they don't fit there either. You see? They don't fit. They're tight. So what I think is that we've got four duff screws here. These screws are not the right size. This is exactly one of the reasons why I like to use fender parts. Because this here is out to spec. Now I've got to go jumping around on eBay or somewhere else to go and find somewhere where I can get four screws in gold that are the correct ones. More money, I'm afraid. I don't know how much they'll be. They won't be that expensive, but it's usually the time in messing around and waiting for these components to arrive so I can build the guitar and this is an ongoing problem every single time you build a guitar it's one thing or it's another and I tell you something neck plates are a major piece of hassle and so are these these screws anyway I'll be back in a minute well it might be actually a week it'll be a minute to you a week to me uh, when I've got the screws and we screw the neck on or maybe I'll do some other little bits and pieces in the meantime we shall see well here I am I'm still talking about the neck screws. That's a little Tony McKenzie tip actually. Because if they supply your neck screws that don't fit into these Warmoth holes, assuming you've got Warmoth, or any other fender really that uh, actually has the right sized holes in there on the body, then these screws are rubbish. But you wouldn't know that if you'd never built one. You'd end up with fitting these screws and drilling out the bodies and then you'll have a non-standard guitar. And that's not a good idea. You want to keep it as standard as you can. Because, hey listen, Leo Fender wasn't an idiot. <laughs> I might be, but he isn't. Wasn't he indeed. So these screws are out. And these screws are in. Well, what are these screws? Well, these screws are part number 001-878-5049 from Fender. And I'll tell you what they are, just in case you don't, you don't want to buy the Fender ones. They're 8 by 1 and 3 quarter inch OHP Gold 4 off. It says here, Fender Custom Shop. Plate. And the screws fit absolutely perfect. But more importantly... Fit in there perfect with no work, no redrawing, nothing. And that's a simple thing to see as a problem. If you didn't know, well, you wouldn't know. And if you did know, well, you're one of them guys who should be watching this, eh? See you. <laughs> so let's fit the neck just temporarily. Now, first things first here, when you take one of these necks, like this, it's a Telecaster neck. What you don't want to do is put it in like that and start sliding it that way. That's a bit of a mistake. What you should do is take it in as far as it will go before you fit it. Then push it down. Okay? Because these are actually on a sort of a V thing and they, they don't like to be uh, sort of slid in. So that's an important aspect of when you're fitting a neck. Well, what do we do from there? Well, the rest's pretty easy, actually. I'll just move the camera and we'll have a look. 
Now remember, I'm not going to over tighten this neck or anything, it's just a temporary thing, just to keep the thing in position while I do other things. So, you want the plate on there, you want your first screw, and this should just push in like so, start them off. Pull it pretty easy, don't let your neck move. Keep your head still too. <laughs> Okay, now, <clears throat> now you might use a screwdriver of the regular type, or you might use one like what I tend to use. It's all nice and easy, as long as you just start them off nice and steady. Start them going. That's good. Okay. Now we can set the body down. So as you can see, there they are screwed in place. You can see that the screws fit very nicely in the uh, holes. And so, for the very first time, you have the opportunity to look at your guitar as it's really going to be. And uh, this one's uh, all sort of, it's got this uh, sort of vibe about cream. Cream neck, cream body. Sort of brownie creamy back. It all looks, it all matches if you look at that. It's all designed to be stuck together. And whether you build the body yourself or whether you build the neck yourself or whatever, it doesn't really matter. It makes little difference to the end result. You can see it's beginning to fall into place and I've hardly done anything really. Well actually I have hardly done something but uh, it's not obvious until you play them later. So I'm going to move on a bit further now. I just wanted to show you that. 